Here we are outside the Ecclesfield Parish Council offices, located on Mortimley Lane in High Green. The Ecclesfield Parish is situated on the northern fringes of Sheffield in South Yorkshire. It was once one of the largest ecclesiastical parishes in the whole country, at one point covering around 50,000 acres. It was served by the parish church of St Mary's, a grade one listed building that was known as the Minster of the Moors for its remote location. The element Eccles in Ecclesfield comes from the Celtic word Ecclesia, meaning a Christian church, and Field comes from the Anglo-Saxon word Feld, meaning a treeless area in an otherwise well-wooded landscape. This large parish was broken up in the 19th century into much smaller parishes. Today, the Ecclesfield Civil Parish covers the areas of Chapeltown, Greneside, High Green, and of course, Ecclesfield. The Ecclesfield and District Archives produced seven walks in leaflet form and are available on ecclesfieldparishwalks.co.uk. These detailed short rambles outline some heritage sites and places of interest on various routes around the parish for people to explore. So let's now learn something of the area together. For centuries, the Ecclesfield Parish has relied upon the exploitation of its physical resources, the land, coal, woods, iron, and the power generated from its small streams. This gave rise at an early date, not only to farming, quarrying, coal and ironstone mining, and woodland crafts, but also gave rise to a tradition of iron production, light metal trades, and later on, foundry work, engineering, and coke and chemical production. Eventually, it was coal mining, foundry products, engineering and chemical production, together with the growth of Sheffield and the suburbanisation of its population, which transformed the landscape of the area into the interlocking residential communities of today. Where we are now was once the headquarters of Newton Chambers. This was set up by two enterprising men, George Newton and Thomas Chambers, in 1793. They chose the Thorncliffe Chapeltown area because of its extensive valley site and because it was so close to iron and coal deposits. The land was initially leased from the Earl Fitzwilliam of Wentworth Woodhouse. In 1795, the first furnace was complete and a year later, the second one was completed as well. At the start of their business, they had 12 employees. By the early 1800s, they had around 300. And by the 1950s, they had over 8,000 workers. They made both light and heavy castings, gas lighting equipment and gas plants, as well as excavators and even cast iron housing. During the Second World War, as part of the war effort, the excavator factory on Warren Lane made 1,160 Churchill tanks. The last pig iron made at Newton Chambers was in 1943. By the 1960s, the foundries were running at a loss and the whole company was sold to Central and Sherwood, who sold off many parts of the firm in 1971. Today, the site exists as Thorncliffe business park with a lot of the old buildings demolished, new ones erected and a lot of the land being used for industrial housing estates. The memory and the legacy of Thorncliffe Ironworks lives on in archival records, street names, thousands of photographs and in the memories of many. Another famous product created by a Newton Chambers analytical chemist was Eisel a disinfected registered in 1893. This germicidal oil was a byproduct of coke making and was sold throughout the world to combat infectious diseases. They were the first and probably only firm to make medicated toilet paper. 
Those who remember it recall its lack of absorbency, being strong but shiny. It was, however, good for tracing maps for school homework. The firm's flair for innovation and advertising made Eisel a household name, and they produced over a hundred products impregnated with the Eisel disinfectant from lozenges, ointment, soap, tooth powder and dustbin powder, to shampoo, and of course, they sold the disinfectant itself. This pond, Thorncliffe Pond, was originally used to store water for the chapel furnace, which operated in the 16th and 17th centuries alongside modern day Station Road. It was later taken up by the Newton Chambers Company. It was fed by Charlton Brook. Charlton Brook Dam was built higher upstream in 1870 for their ironworks. Interestingly, Charlton Brook was recorded in a document in 1453 as Cherkin Brook, with Cherkin being a medieval word for squelching. Indeed, the water meadows that once ran along the course of this would have been very wet after rain. This is a part of a walk around the Charlton Brook and Thorncliffe Pond, a 2.5 miles walk that takes one and a half hours to do. It starts at the Barrel Inn and some sites along the way include Charlton Brook, Charlton Brook Dam and the Thorncliffe Pond, but also Housley Hall. Housley was first mentioned in 1436 when it was owned by John and Joan Housley. It remained in the Housley or Housley Freeman family until 1837. The hall we see today is largely 17th century. Since 1837 it has had a chequered history being owned by the Earl of Warncliffe, the Chambers family, then becoming a boys boarding school followed by numerous farming tenants until restoration as a private home once again. St John's Church dates back to 1860. It closed for worship in 2000 and was later converted into office space. What is now Westwood Country Park was once the site of Tankersley Colliery, which was opened in 1867 and closed in 1927. And what is now Pleasant Countryside was once the site of open cast mining and a spoil tip, all of which was removed after landscaping of the area. It was also the site of two rows of cottages and a bitter industrial unrest, known as the Westwood Riots in 1870. Westwood roads were situated on the other side of the dam here. They were built by Newton and Chambers to house blackleg labour. You see, Newton Chambers Company had lowered the wages of their men and refused to negotiate with the miners union. They then recruited non-union workers and built Thorncliffe and Westwood Rows to house them in. On the 21st of January 1870, between 300 and 1,500 miners who were locked out of work attacked the cottages that once stood here. One miner and one policeman were seriously injured. 23 were trialled at the York Assizes and 11 were sentenced. The Westwood Roads were then demolished in the 1960s. Westwood Dam was constructed by Newton Chambers to supply water for the Thorncliffe Ironworks. In the 1970s, the dam was drained and dredged. It's been a fishing lake since the 1980s. There was also Westwood Station. This was part of the Blackburn Line of the Great Central Railway and it is believed to have been opened by 1876. It would have served the Westwood Rows but also been used to help deal with traffic caused by Newton Chambers. It was closed in 1940 and the last traces of it disappeared with the landscaping of the area in the 1970s. This is a part of a walk from Mortonley to Thorncliffe Woods, a two miles walk that takes an hour to do. 
It starts at the Ecclesfield Parish Council offices and some sites along the way include Westwood Country Park and Westwood Dam, but also Mortimley Park. The apartments were once the site of Mortimley Hall, which was built in 1703 and demolished in the 1960s. There is also Thorncliffe Wood, which belonged to the 7th Earl of Shrewsbury in 1600. At this time, the wood was used for charcoal, and today the wood is recovering from damage caused by coal mining and iron working. Chapel Town was, and still is, well used for shopping and recreation. Before industrial enterprises became established in the 19th century, it was little more than a straggling hamlet along the main routeways and around the crossroads. Initially, Chapel Town was known simply as Chapel, named after a chapel of ease situated within sight of the centre. Its early growth sprang from its location around a crossroads that connected the Barnsley and Sheffield Road and the Rotherham to Wortley Road. Today, a roundabout has replaced those crossroads. Within a mile or two of the roundabout, there are ancient woodlands to explore, including Low Spring Wood, Hall Wood and Parking Wood. Beside the Thomas Chambers Newton Memorial Hall is the entrance to Chapel Town Park, established almost 100 years ago. There are numerous places near here to eat and drink, another key part of Chapel Town's development and its attraction. The crossroads were the epicentre for trade and numerous small service industries. A lot of inns and alehouses were built around that area to cater for travellers. The Wagon and Horses pub replaced a building built in the 1700s specifically for travellers and their horse-drawn wagons. Within a short distance, there are nine other public houses, most of which serve food. There are also places to stay in the parish, including Whitley Hall. If you favour a secluded, rural, historic venue, you can even get married in this mansion. Welcome to Whitley Hall. Whitley Hall is a stunning country house nestled in the heart of the Ecclesfield Parish. It is a beautiful mansion, but there was actually a house here before this one called Launder House, which dates back to 1406. In 1487, the Parker family, side makers from Norton, purchased the site and eventually began rebuilding. The old core of the replacement house dates back to 1584 which is about the time it got the name Whitley. Now, Whitley is derived from an old English name meaning bright woodland clearing, appropriate as today it sits among pleasant woodlands and meadows. Local legend suggests that Mary, Queen of Scots, stayed here when traveling through the area or staying at Sheffield Castle, but it seems highly unlikely and there's no documentary evidence of it. But there is a certain romance to the story. The Shirecliffe family bought this house in 1626 and future generations of the family occupied it until selling it to the Bingleys in 1790. For a few decades it was let as a school until the Bingleys reoccupied it until the death of Maria Bingley in 1939. During the Second World War, it was taken over by the military and was occupied by officers and their servants. Then, across from St Mary's Church, there is the Gatti Memorial Hall. It was built in memorial to Reverend Dr Alfred Gatti, Vicar of St Mary's from 1839 to 1903. It cost £1,300 to build and was paid for by public subscription. It is now run by a charitable trust. 
This is a part of a walk from Ecclesfield Church to Whitley, a two miles walk that takes an hour to do. It starts at Priory Road, Ecclesfield, and some sites along the way include Whitley Hall, but also the Church of St Mary, Ecclesfield. Although construction of the church began in 1478, remnants of the Norman church can be found inside, with the oldest parts being the pillars in the nave. Look at the memorials and detailed stained glass windows inside the church and explore the graveyard. They all give clues about many local families, a real who's who of the neighbourhood. One of the final places on our journey is Greno Woods in Grenoside. Grenoside was first recorded in the 13th century and means quarried hillside. The village was once famous for its stone quarries. Other industries associated with Grenoside in the past include woodland crafts, file cutting and the operating of small crucible furnaces. Greno Woods covers around 170 hectares. The woods occupy an ancient woodland site. They were managed as a coppice with standards woodlands. The standards timber trees provided building material, while the coppice, known as underwood, was used for charcoal for smelting iron and later crucible steel. Greno Woods is now managed and owned by the Sheffield and Rotherham Wildlife Trust. Large swathes were once planted with conifers, mainly larch and Corsican pine. These areas are gradually being felled in order to encourage a re-establishment of native deciduous trees. Some areas here are now challenging trails for mountain bikers. The woodlands are rich in wildlife with resident and migrant birds. Look out for red wings and black cats in their season. Among the flora is common cow wheat, not common as its name suggests, but rare, and the green woodpeckers love the many wood ant nests. This is a part of a walk from Potter Hill to Greno Woods, a five mile walk that takes two hours to do. It starts at the top of Springwood Lane and some sites along the way include Greno Woods and the former Hallwood Isolation Hospital, opened in 1916 to cater for smallpox patients. A private house now occupies the site. Much of the historical information and old images that were used for the walks leaflets were kindly loaned by the Chapeltown and High Green Archive, who also supported the Ecclesfield and District Archiving Project, whose aim was to digitise historical photographs, pamphlets and information about the area to be used on a website to be made accessible for all. This would have not been possible without the help of volunteers. The role of volunteers is vital in putting together the Ecclesfield and District Archive website. The loaning and sorting of materials and the scanning and uploading is invaluable and make it what it is today. So if you'd like to volunteer, please contact Emma through the Ecclesfield and District Archive website for more information. For further information about the history of Ecclesfield Parish, please visit ecclesfielddistrictarchives.com. The site has hundreds of photographs, a history of the parish, a list of publications, and is a treasure trove for researchers, residents, and family historians. So, please try out the walks. Visit ecclesfieldparishwalks.co.uk and delve into the Ecclesfield and District Archive website, ecclesfielddistrictarchive.com. There's so much to learn and explore.